So, a crisis or critical incident is any event that overwhelms a person's sense of vulnerability and control. We all know that we're vulnerable, we all know that we can die, but when something happens and there's the emotional realization that maybe you are going to die, it's very real. And these are the kinds of memories that can get stuck or frozen in the brain. And we all want to feel that we are in control. If bad things happen, there's something we can do about it. But there are things, bad things that happen to us that we have no control over. So how do we feel knowing that bad things can happen and there's nothing we can do? Vulnerable. So this is what a critical incident is, or a crisis incident. It's something bad that's happening that can overwhelm a sense of vulnerability and control. Now, EMDR can be part of an overall intervention package when there is a crisis. So, a major concept to consider, first of all, is psychological first aid. A person right after a crisis needs a sense of safety. There needs to be notification, uh, communication with family, uh, with friends. A person may need information. Uh, they may need referral, they also may need some very basic supplies, you know, food, shelter. So psychological first aid is an overall concept to uh, where we can implement many different uh, interventions for safety and for calming the individual. EMDR can make a contribution to those people who are experiencing significant distress. There are a number of different protocols utilizing EMDR in the immediate aftermath of a traumatic event. What's the immediate aftermath? It may be 24 hours, 48 hours, or maybe a week, depending on when the person is ready. For example, right after a critical incident, a person may feel numb, maybe in a state of shock. And this is where the person needs, if I can use the expression, chicken soup, calm, safety, psychological first aid. But at some point, the emotional impact starts to hit. And this is where EMDR interventions can be helpful to start to process the trauma and enable natural uh, healing processes to start to come online for further integration to take place. What was particularly meaningful for me out of the many traumatic incidents I've responded to uh, would be September 11th of 2001, when the Twin Towers went down. Uh, also in the Pentagon, uh, was, was, was also bombed. I spent a lot of time in New York City working with people who were involved in this incident, including uh, providing psychological first aid to some people and EMDR therapy uh, to others. That it was something very, very helpful, not only in the immediate aftermath, but, but also in the months and years following. Complex trauma is when there is a history of abuse or neglect, as well as later trauma. So when we talk about a traumatic event, there's not just what happens as an adult. There can be a childhood history, physical abuse, uh, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, or neglect. And so the accumulation of all these traumas uh, results in, in complex trauma or dissociative disorders. I also want to say that research has shown that disorganized attachment style with the addition of later trauma is responsible or underlies the symptoms of complex trauma and dissociative disorders. 
So the treatment will be phase-oriented treatment. We first, of course, have to deal with the fact that there may be disorganized attachment. So we want to have the safety of a solid therapeutic relationship. And that's something that can take place fairly quickly or other people need a longer period of time. But we focus on the person being able to control their affect. In other words, affect regulation. Uh, we will deal with their symptoms. We want to increase uh, their ability to, to feel in control of, of their environment, external environment, but, but also be able to have a sense of control internally. They can calm themselves. So again, this can take place in a matter of a few sessions sometimes, and sometimes months or even longer, years can be needed. And then the person is ready to do memory work. So we talked about the stabilization phase. This would include uh, the EMDR preparation phase. And when the person's ready to do the memory work, we have the EMDR standard protocol. And there have been some uh, modifications that have been uh, written about and that I also utilize for dealing with complex trauma dissociation through the standard protocol. And then after we, we process the traumas, uh, it's also important uh, to have a third phase of treatment, which is called personality reintegration. Now the person can learn new skills, uh, they can start to cope with life in a different way, they can start to reinvest in relationships in different ways. So it's important to understand that these different, these three phases are not linear. It's more like a spiral. We can do some stabilization and then some memory work, then so much material comes up we go back to stabilization and more memory work and now the person is ready to learn new skills and after learning some new skills some other memories come up so we can process those. So in other words it's, it's, it's not a strict linear sequence.